Hey, God bless you guys. Today we're going to read chapter 10 of the book of Psalms. But before we do, I want to ask you to join me in just acknowledging this day, acknowledging today the power and the majesty and the glory of God and how high and lifted up he is and how big and majestic and wonderful he is. So this, chap uh, this chapter, chapter 10, is why do you hide yourself? So I just want you, as I read this psalm, to consider that uh, King David, who is known as a man after God's own heart, went through many seasons of crying out to the Lord, wondering where the Lord was and why the Lord was hiding himself. So if you feel like this in this season, of um, battling and weariness and waiting upon the Lord that you have felt like the Lord is absent or you can't hear him or feel him right now, just remember that that is a common um, challenge and common desert season that the believer must go through. And so you're not alone in that. There's nothing wrong with you for that. But let's see how David responds. He says, Why, O Lord, do you stand far away? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? In arrogance, the wicked hotly pursue the poor. Let them be caught in the schemes that they have devised. Do you find yourself praying that for the wicked, uh, in the wicked governmental leaders, the pseudo government, and the wicked people that have set themselves up at, in leadership? falsely in the nations and said, Lord, let them be caught in their own schemes that they've planned. For the wicked boast of the desires of his soul and the one greedy for gain curses and renounces the Lord. In the pride of his face, the wicked does not seek him. All his thoughts are, there is no God. And we can see in this chat, in this, there's a theme that the wicked act as if there's no God that they're accountable to, and they're actually proud and boastful about saying there is no God. His ways prosper at all times. Your judgments are on high out of his sight. As for all his foes, he puffs at them. So the wicked don't even think about the recompense of, the, of God or his judgments. They think they're above it uh, and that they won't be affected by it. He says in his heart, I shall not be moved throughout all generations. I shall not meet adversity. His mouth is filled with cursing and deceit and oppression. Under his tongue are mischief and iniquity. He sits in ambush in the villages. In hiding places, he murders the innocent. His eyes stealthily watch for the helpless. He lurks in ambush like a lion in his thicket. He lurks that he may seize the poor. He seizes the poor when he draws him into his net. The helpless are crushed, sink down, and fall by his might. He says in his heart, God has forgotten. He has hidden his face. He will never see it. And we know that's not true. Just like David says in verse 12, Arise, O Lord, O God, lift up your hand. Forget not the afflicted. Why does the wicked renounce God and say in his heart, You will not call to account? But you see, but do you see, for you note mischief and vexation, that you may take it into your hands. To you the helpless commits himself. You have been the helper of the fatherless. Break the arm of the wicked and evildoer. Call his wickedness to account till you find none. And many, the remnant bride of Christ in this hour, are calling out to the Lord that the Lord would break the arm of the wicked rulers in the nations, that the Lord would call their wickedness to account and root it out and rid it out of the nations. Hallelujah. The Lord is king forever and ever. The nations perish from his land. O Lord, you hear the desire of the afflicted. You will strengthen their heart. You will incline your ear to do justice, to do justice to the fatherless and the oppressed, so that the man who is of the earth may strike terror no more. And so, Lord, we come in agreement with your word and with King David. And we say, Lord, that though the wicked act as if they are above you and that they're actually, they act as if there is no God, that they boast in their wickedness. Um, we, we ask, Lord, and come in agreement with your word that you would break their arm and that you would catch them in their own schemes and you would 
root all wickedness out of the nations, Lord. Let it be done. No matter how much shaking the nations have to go through, when you shake, 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 and sift out the wicked to expose it, we know that you will keep us, your righteous ones, and preserve us. And we ask that you would bring this shaking, Lord, to break and root them out. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen.